Okay. I'm Brandon Marchand. Um, uh, on the ALC, I uh, wanted to put together a little presentation on a few uh, technology items for uh, specifically Keller Williams KWLS, um, and then a few other tools if we have time uh, to run through. Um, something I found is that I, I would go to uh, make a camp and go to different uh, events, and they would tell me, um, hey, we have this great tool, this is KWLS, you can do branded photos, you can do all this great stuff, and then when you ask someone, well, how do I do that? And they're like, well, I think so-and-so knows. And then you would, you would go ask them, and they're like, yeah, I heard you could do that too. And then, and then I would ask around, and then eventually I kind of was a little frustrated, and so I started asking around, doing some reading. I did find a few, um, few good systems on, uh, on kw.com, on the KW University. People are uh, generous enough to share their progress. Um, but then, uh, and then I realized it was, they showed us how to use the tools, but didn't really discuss a strategy of, you know, how this ultimately ended up either benefiting my business, making more free time for me, or making more money uh, for me. So um, I put it, I, I took some time and built a strategy, uh, something we're actively implementing at the moment. So um, what I'm hoping to do is if any of you take anything away from this, I'd love to hear feedback on what you find works because I'd like to document it to try and build a better system. But um, I have some ideas. I'd like to think they're really good, but um, you may have even better ideas as far as that goes. Um, I'm going to jump right into it. Um, I'm going to give a little overview of what I'm going to go over today, and then I'm going to kind of just jump right into the nuts and bolts. I'm actually going to log into KWLS and, and work directly in the system, so my uh, presentation is, uh, is, is kind of low, low budget. I use the Star Trek theme on here uh, for technology. So uh, um, what we'll cover the branding and listing modifications on the KWLS. Um, I think there's some really cool tools. If you've been reading the articles that KW has been kind of keeping us abreast of all the uh, Zillow Trulia stuff, um, the branded photos are not as um, um, available right now as they have been. Some of our, and so I'm not going to go over that, and, but I will touch on it um, briefly um, just in case it comes back. I'd like you to know at least where to go and what to do. Um, and then Marketing strategies in the KWLS for pre-list and then during the listing marketing. Um, what's nice about KWLS is you can actually put your listing in ahead of the MLS so that you can get it on Zillow, Trulia, and a hundred other websites, including the corporate sites of Remax, Cobalt Banker, and those guys, um, before you even put it on the MLS. Uh, so we, you can actually do a pre-market. We, we did a test of this this early this spring, and I call that early this spring, February this year. Um, but we put a house on the market three days ahead of the MLS, had all the paperwork properly squared away. I had, an, I had to put it on the off, uh, we, we planned to hold it off a week, but I had an offer coming and I wanted to market pending. So I had to put it on the market. So we got an offer the first in, in, within the first two days of pre-market um, and it was over full price um, and the pro I had to put the property on the market just to market pending. So um, it, it worked really well, especially in the tight inventory market. We have we have people looking everywhere for listings, and if you put it on early, you're the only person that can be contacted because they call it a realtor. He won't find it because he'll find it on Zillow and he'll find your number, your mug, and your number. So um, I've so got can a few. Can I ask a question? Sure. I hope you don't mind. Not at all. <laughs> but um, so I'm very new to this, and um, but. Is that allowed in our MLS system for us to market properties prior to um, actually having them in the MLS system? It is. It, you have to use proper forms with your clients and you have to disclose everything. And I, and I have that, I will go over that okay. process in here. And if you're, if you're setting that up, I've, I've talked with people I've done it, I've worked with the MLS even on it. And um, there are, I mean, there are ways to do it right. And, I, and I'd be happy to help you. I'm sure Ken's not, and he'd be happy to help you. Um, but there is sure. a way to do it Good right. You don't want to do it halfway. So if, if at all, I, I'm happy to answer any questions on it or anything. And then if we have time, free and low-cost tools for internet lead generation, I could probably teach a whole two-hour class on that, so we might do that, or I come to a team meeting or something. But um, if we get time for that. 
So a KWLS um, was uh, designed to insulate Keller Williams uh, against abrupt changes in MLS syndication and rules. So essentially, as Keller Williams grows market share, all of our listings are in the KWLS. And if for whatever reason we needed to in operate independently, we could. You know, we would have if we had the majority of the inventory in the world. Um, you know, we would we could operate that way. But where it's, where it's proving beneficial to us right now is in this truly a Zillow uh, fiasco or whatever's going on right now, where where we need to be able to quickly syndicate our data somewhere. Um, it's already ready for syndication. It's and it's already at, at, there's already a front end user front end for us to easily manipulate our listing data for presentation to the masses. And ListHub did a really good job of. Uh, changing the accuracy problem we had several years ago. ListHub would, uh, ListHub fixed the problem of having one, one site say 150,000 and one site representing a price drop you just did of 145,000. Um, so with ListHub and the KWLS syndication, there's one central point of data input, so no gar so garbage in, garbage out fixed. We have, it syndicates the price, that price gets syndicated to the masses. And so one of the benefits we have with that system now is KW has given us the opportunity to inject marketing in between um, the MLS and the masses, and I'm going to go over that. So, um, and I basically point to there options to modify the data in the feed and uh, for customized marketing experience. There are two schools of thought on this, and I'll go over both of those. So, um, to get started. Um, we're going to log into the KWLS account. I'm going to I'm going to drop out of this presentation quick, real quick, and uh, you can follow along. But um, I'm happy. I have a I have a document I've made on this, a PDF, and so I will get it to the front desk or something, and they'll they can give it to anyone who wants it. So and I think you have it already, Chase. So and Kevin might have it too. Um, so I'm going to go to kw.com. Form. Yeah, it, the, there's plenty of Mac products that do it, but RoboForm works on the PC and the Mac, so like it can sync to my system's PC and we can share passwords. So we're going to go to technology and then KWLS. It's going to pop up the new K, the, and it's actually new and improved KWLS interface. Uh, you'll notice that they've um, Kind of simplify the interface a little bit. Um, this is how we would put a listing into KWLS. Yep. So, so then on Paragon, we would choose no on the. No, you don't have IDX. To, no, you don't have to do that anymore. Okay. The IDX is completely different from KWLS. Mm -hmm. um, so I guess I'm gonna unplug myself if I'm not careful here. But the IDX is completely different. So let's let's stop right there, and that, that's a good, that's actually a really great segue. So um, the MLS dumps directly into ListHub when you put your data in. Mm -hmm. ListHub goes to syndicates it to KW. Once it's in KW, it then says whatever's in KW takes precedence of whatever's in whatever's here. So there's a little button down here, single point of entry. You see at the bottom where it says ListHub enabled. Mm -hmm. If that is unchecked, if that button there is unchecked, you will not synchronize from the MLS to there. You have to manually input it into KWLS. But for, for most people, if you're just gonna get started in this system, I would let it sync and then I would edit it. If you want to, if, if and, and so for this process, let's pretend I put a listing in yesterday, I have ListHub enabled so it has synced over 
And we're simply going to do during the listing marketing, not pre-listing marketing. I will go back and do a workflow for that next. Is that, am I, got, do I have everyone? So here's the timeline. I put in my listing yesterday, we went live, flyers are out, everything's good. It's sync, I, I'm gonna go check here to uh, accepted listings. And I've got some of our listings in here. Um, and I, let's, for instance, uh, uh, my, my listing on campus. <coughs> we, put it in, we put it in there, it's synchronized, it's great. I'm gonna open that listing up by clicking on that MLS number right there. If you can't see, it's kind of off the screen. But then I've got all this data here, um, on here, which is all the data that's synchronized from the MLS. And some of those fields don't line up for me. And there's, and there's, and if you'll notice, if I go down here to edit, I have a lot more fields in here than, and that aren't filled in. So there's more information I can provide to the consumer. I can make it, so if we, if we go in through, it, I would I'd make a practice, and we haven't, up, we haven't embellished, that we call embellishing the listing. We haven't embellished this listing yet, but we'll fill out all this information, cross street all this stuff, because there are websites out there for, for whatever reason that will sync this data. And I want my listings to have the most data, so when people say, well, I really like Brandon's listings because it always has a lot of data. And, you know, area, you can name the subdivision, um, design detail, there's a whole bunch of stuff that the MLS doesn't, doesn't doesn't match. So I would I would have your admin or have your have you do it. I would fill all this data in. Um, if you're a member of the luxury homes team, I would look at Keller Williams Luxury Homes and it does fit the criteria, you can you can flag it as a luxury home. So then it gets syndicated to all the KW, KW luxury sites. Um, and and each one of these these little criteria will help determine how many different sites your property gets syndicated to. Mm -hmm. So like for instance, waterfront sites will go to more waterfront properties. So the more accurate you can make this, um, the better. So I'm, I wanna really embellish this. So let's let's just say I've got this on the market and tons of people are finding houses on Zillow, right? You, you send your clients all the lead listings they want on Paragon and your website and all that mm -hmm. stuff. But they still text you, hey, I wanna see this house I found on Zillow. Mm -hmm. and, and in fact, they text you right from the Zillow app, mm -hmm. you know? Even no matter what you do, they will do that. And so, one thing I have done is, you notice I have call 990 sold for more information on this property, on this great property, or visit www.findhomes.mobi. And all findhomes.mobi is, is a, is a small URL that I made that forwards directly to my mobile optimized search page on my website. So, they go to findhomes.mobi on their phone, search field just like Zillow, and, and then now I've, I've essentially pulled them away from Zillow. So what was what was the name of that? You said, what is that called? Uh, Findhomes.mobi. No, or you just said I have a... Mobile optimized. It's just like if you use uh, eEdge, your okay. eEdge website. Um, okay. if, you, if you just make a URL and, and, and if, if somebody wants, if you, if you want to get together and put URLs together, I'm mm -hmm. happy to sit down and do like grab lunch and just sit around and do it for, and it'll take an hour to do five or 10. We can set that up. But, and here's where I got into strategy. If I went in there and put, because all of us have our, uh, our whatever, amazing Spokane homes for sale, all of them, dot com, these giant long 500 mm -hmm. character URLs. Mm -hmm. I don't want to put that in there because it's hard to remember. Plus it takes up space and I, and, and I, I want people to, I want people to know how to contact me quickly, but then start reading about the, the house because they're there for the house. And so I put it at the beginning of the text because if Zillow were to try and truncate something, they would probably truncate it at the end if it were too long or if any of the sites were. And so people look on their phone, they're scrolling, they'll, they'll say a phone number right, right away. They'll, we get calls and texts from it. Android phones actually underline that 990 sold. Um, I did a split test. If 990 sold with the alpha characters in the phone number, it does not, it does not underline it. But if I do full numeric phone number formatted in that fashion, um, a lot of phones will underline it. They click and call me, click and text me, right from the Zillow app, or, or on Zillow website. Okay, so you took this listing, did, did you input it first in Paragon? Yes. And on Paragon, did you have on IDX reciprocity, everything yes? Yep, okay. I don't change any of that. Good, and you have, um, you had that box checked on this where it's a list of enabled. Yep. Now this description, 
Is this the description you put in your Paragon input? No. Okay. okay. It syncs it over first. I add this here, and you'll notice that that's right here. Check box to lock the description field. Once you change it, you just check that box, and it's locked. So you put it in Paragon, yes, 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 I get reciprocity, then you log in here, and then you manually write the description there, and then check that box to lock the description. And yep. then that way, your description is being syndicated, which that description is a violation of MLS rules and regs, but you're being syndicated by way of KWLS, so we avoid MLS rules yep. and regs. So we're, we're skipping, we're, we're going it. in between the MLS and the syndicate. Perfect. Love it. Yeah. So what, you're, what we're doing is we wait, because you wait until it syndicates, and then you basically have a second checklist. Embellish the listing. If you're going to make a checklist, you wait for it to syndicate. You, you click edit. You fill out all the fields you want to. You click... You click call 990 soul. You put your phone number in there. You can use your URL in there. My strategy is I want a short one, uh, you, know, a, you know, a short URL in there. And then I can also, if you, if, and URLs are 12 bucks. So you can you can track how much traffic on your, if you know, if you have your stats package on your eEdge and all that stuff, mm -hmm. you can track how many people are coming from that. So I, that's what I like to know. And, and because it's not worth my time, not worth me paying my staff to, to, to do it, if it's not going to have an ROI, and so we th this in here um, is great. So the other thing that Zillow and Truly, and part of the part of the merger was, is they're going to honor our honor our syndication agreement, but they're also going to put the listing agent as the top um, the top tier. Let me see if I can I save the link here. So the description that you originally put into Paragon is only going to be seen by those. On Paragon, yeah. So, um, oh, can everyone see okay. this board here? I'll show. I'll show how this this works. So, your MLS data. I'm a left-handed, so if you can't read it, just you have to listen to what I say. Uh, MLS here, it'll syndicate the KWLS. Well, actually, let me just step one step in between here. Goes to List Hub. So we have MLS goes to List Hub. This is where we interject it. KWLS now creates a bond with ListHub basically to where anything in KWLS supersedes anything coming from here. And that's the agreement we have with ListHub. So instead of this being the source, no longer becomes the source, this becomes the source, but we have to get it by this way. You can't get it through going through KWLS first. That, that will be our next step. I, I want to make sure everyone gets this process first because this is the way most people will do it. So, MLS to list hub, the KWLS. So, we're going to get all of our regular remarks go this way into here. And then these are all, all the sites Zillow, Trulia, notrealtor.com. They're directly syndicated from the MLS. So, realtor.com is over here. They get their feed directly through. The MLS, so that's why they that's that's why this whole problem exists with Zillow and Trulia. That's a whole different day. But Zillow, Trulia, all the different hundreds of sites get syndicated there. We interject our marketing right there. This is where we change it. So that's why that's and it's it's really obscure. It's probably more information than you needed, but this is where we're changing this data. So that when it goes now to syndicate to Zillow and Trulia, we have, and, and all the hundreds of other sites, we have a, um, we have an advantage. So. So then, in that description wording, um, does that allow us to put more words in than that very limited amount in Paragon? Correct. Uh, some of those, all the sites will have their own limit, and they'll truncate. So put your most important stuff on the top. We don't know the limits, and it's, it's inefficient to try and track the limits of every site. Put in all the data you want, um, because I'll show you another thing that KW does, is they build a single page website for every listing automatically through KWLS. So, and you can find it through Googling your address. I just Googled my ad the address for the listing and KW at the end. There's probably a quicker way to find it. That's the quickest way for me to find it. So this URL for campus is generated by the KWLS. So 
This will have all the data you put in there. It'll be a really nice single page website. This page is the basis by which all the other pages pull their data. If you scroll down to the bottom of Zillow and it says, click here for listing website, this is it right here. And you go down the bottom of Trulia on your Trulia for campus and it says, click the link for this web page. It's this one. So you'll notice here, <clears throat> 990 sold for more information on this great property, find homes that movie. Right there on the top. Um, so the KWLS allows, the MLS allows 20 photos, right? KWLS allows 30. So some of the web pages will allow you to do, will allow more. If you send, if you add more pictures, the pictures will update on Truly, a Zillow, and the, any site that allows 20 plus uh, on there. And so some of them, and it's a science I haven't really verified, but I've read through a lot of other agent blogs and stuff that if, um, a lot of the sites will put more value on um, listings with more photos. So if you if you always update yours to 25 to 30, and everyone else has 20, and the off chance that they're valuing there, or there's even some sites that will let you sort by most pictures, you're gonna sort to the top. I was I was taking the minimal effort, highest reward, thinking that most Spokane MLS people mm -hmm. only get 20 and no one's ever gonna log in. I just added one photo to the end of every one, because then I would have the most. But now that I've told you guys, this is probably better. Than 30, so. um, but I was just adding a photo at the end and uh, calling it good. But so let me see if I can find this. It is not off market, but we've been pending and get back. So like, here's the Zillow page. You notice. For the Zillow agreement, I'm the number one top agent on, on, on the side. And then we have uh, my remarks in there. This shows up on the mobile app too. So um, it's really great because um, it's really great because we have we you know if a consumer hits the site, they have questions about it. And they might they might be like unsure of the people on on, on the right. Mm -hmm. um, they have a one, one in four chance of getting me anyways there. And then, mm -hmm. you know, then, then they have my contact information right there. And if they want to be passive and not and text me, they can do that. Or if they'd like to uh, just visit our website and, and get more information there, uh, they'd be they're happy to do that too. So the reason you go to the find homes that will be four slash the specific house address. It, that, just because I was, I was thinking that someone would have to try and remember that because it's not clickable. Oh, okay. I just tried to make it memory. Perfect. So, if you if you do a short URL, make it memorable, um, and that's pretty memorable. We have home guide at Moby too. So, yeah. So you can see the 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 um, you can see the benefit to this, right? I mean, you know, consumers are always going on there. We're we're going to have all of our listings completely dial, dialed in with contact information. In all, in on the top of all the remarks, um, you know, here within the next week or so. But um, it's it, it, if, if you get one or two good leads out of it, or one or two good sales out of it here and there, the effort of putting a sentence in the top of every one and checking a box, um, it's pretty good, pretty good uh, dollar per hour return. Um, so let's see here. Any questions? Well, one here. So we can't. I I have lots of questions. So we can't put that line in, or we wouldn't want to if we were doing it in Paragon. We wouldn't want to put that line in. We would get a in. fine. We would get a fine. Yep. Okay. So you can't put any contact information in, in the remarks on Paragon. So you've got to put it in. And when you input the listing in Paragon, follow the rules, do it just like you're doing it. And we, because we, we, we have a trick, we have a way to get it. Okay, out of it, so. great. Yeah. This is great. Good stuff, Brandon. This is great. Okay, <laughs> give a raise. <laughs> I forward it to the search page on our IDX page. So, um, so we're at the edit listing here. Um, we can embellish. You can add all this information here. Be sure because if you don't, if you don't check this box when you're done, it, it'll last maybe a day and then be gone. And what is when it syncs back up and updates. So if you check this, it'll update everything but that field. So. But the, the thing you've got to remember now is, because I know all of us use checklists, right, for everything. So we, and uh, 
So <laughs> you, you need to know that now when you update the remarks on this, like if your client says, hey, hey, make sure you say there's AC in the remarks, okay. you've got to go back here and change that because you have blocked that field. So if you change it in the MLS, you've got to say, okay, change. So all, all I told, all we did on our systems is said change an MLS, comma, and KWLS. Fixed. Then when you go through it, you're just reminded to go change it in two places. Because nothing's more embarrassing than having your client tell you to change it and tell them you did, mm -hmm. and then and then them say, "Well, I'm on Zillow. It still still says it doesn't say AC." So uh, that's one thing uh, we found. So I've got a couple other things that we're just testing right now, but I, I think everyone should start doing it. They're not, they're, they're dropping them off now. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. They're dropping what off? Um, they're, they're dropping, they, so you put, if, if you branded photos mm -hmm. um, on there, because you used to be able to put your name and phone number on all the photos and it would show up on Zillow and Trulia. But Zillow and Truly I have, must have some manual process now by which they're um, by which they're removing those because all of ours have been removed. So. Okay. Mm. Yeah. Can you create a photo with that information, with like your name and phone number or something, in your virtual tour or in these photos of the thirty? That's that was the trick. That you would upload. Oh, right. that was. The, that's would, what they're dropping. Yeah, they're dropping. Okay. Those. You would upload branded photos and photo and and um, oh. and then they would and now now we're seeing them uh, remove them. So so would that out five zero? <laughs> would that be with the branded um, the, when you have a virtual tour and the realtor one of the pictures is a little video of the realtor introducing himself? Yeah. Would that be that's where the branded would come in? Is that correct? Yeah. So and I, I, if, if the if the Wireless comes back up. I'll show you how we do that. Okay, great. Thank you. I'm going to go back onto the, the this computer's plugged in directly. The wireless just doesn't work very well down here. Sorry.
were at. It doesn't sound like it. It sounds like they just they just cleaned yeah. up the, the evening yeah. and the evening. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's got some rings. I need to look at my passwords. Is the only reason I'm using mine. Okay, I think we're I think we're back up. <clears throat> okay, so I'm back here in my dashboard. Um, I'm not going to do that right now. Um, so. We're back at the dashboard. Um, you can see where we made our changes. So the people, someone asked here, I'm going to go over to the images here, and this is where you can upload images. So we're under the details tab. You've got all these tabs here that you can continue to embellish your listing. So I've got images. And so if you upload additional photos, you, you can check a box here, and it will open up a dialog for you to browse photos. And so when you check this box here, this is like checking the bottom of the box on your remarks. This click here to upload additional photos. So I've got my current photos. These photos are syncing from the list hub in the MLS. It's really weird. It's just, just this little teeny obscure box. Click here to upload additional photos. Mm -hmm. If you don't do that, you can't upload more photos. But when you do that, it stops all syndication between the MLS and your photos. Okay. So if you change your photos, you're going to have to do that again. Update MLS and KWLS. So, but I would check this box here. Got browse photos, and you can add you can add more photos. I don't I had I had that all set up with photos, but you can browse photos here, upload them just like any upload dialog. Um, so the trick was is we would have these branded. We would have Spokane Home Guide Group 509-907-6653. In fact, I even had the first one with an arrow pointing at my head on the Zillow page to say call this guy. You know, like, because, but now they're taking that stuff off. And so I'm not spending the time doing it because I get it all up there. I spend all this effort getting it there. And then within about two, three days, it'll have it knocked down and old pictures up, other pictures up. They, re, they revert to the MLS photos. Oh, okay. So it used to be a really great trick. Um, it worked for a little while. Uh, I just think that Zillow and Truly caught on to it. Um, I don't know how long it will be before they catch on to the text. Um, I don't know if there's a whole lot they can do, though. But could could you then take a shot of the front of the house with your sign, add that photo? Yes, you could. Okay. They would I, I, I don't I don't know if they would, but I think that would be a real nice slide way to try that. Yeah, <laughs> I would try that. Um, I'm going to see if I can go find one where I did do the branded. And you're safe because you have that box check, and so on your whiteboard it's pulling from KWLS and being syndicated. 
not on Paragon, so Paragon won't yep. lag. I want to make sure you're on a really stellar internet connection when you're doing all this too. So we embellished uh, temp. I don't know, uh, 21910. Um, you can see I put a Z in front of the uh, MLS number there uh, to keep it live for this class. But at least this is the one that we had to put on the market because we sold it pretty quickly. Um, I'm going to see if they kept our images in here. Let's see if I put it there. And you can see that we've got all our text for more info. And then I also put three interior photos down the bottom, overlaid it. Are they taking They're knocking those out. That's, I wanted to give everyone an example. They might be bringing it back. It sounds like Keller Williams is doing some negotiating from the emails that I've been receiving. Oh, good. I just want everyone to know that if... That's if, great. Yeah, if you can do that on there. So that's the branded photo example. Um, Ken, along the lines of what you were saying, yeah. we did this at the end. Yeah. Uh, I, I mean, I just made that really quick in Photoshop, and and that's actually our website right there. So, uh, so they would take away, they would wash out your phone number, and what you mentioned earlier, but they would leave that. Um, I don't know if they caught. I don't know if they caught that oh, at the end. Okay. The front one was caught for sure. All okay. right. Uh, yeah, I would do the sign trick. So yeah, if, yeah. So if you're going to do the sign trick, okay, let's 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 do that. So we're we're under editing images. You, you check the box saying that you're going to uh, upload additional photos. All you do is you go browse photos and you upload. These are drag drop, and so you can you can change the order. Oh, they changed it. So you got to add the number up here. Change your number up there. They used to, in the old interface it was really slow. It was a Java interface. You you could drag drop, but you'd have to wait like a minute for it to think mm -hmm. and reorganize all the pictures. Mm -hmm. uh, now they just put numerics up there, so you change the order of the pictures. You it, when you add it, it automatically adds it to the end. And you Put a line up there and bump it to the top. So. so it sounds like you could experiment around, yeah, and then see what they if they knock it out. That. Well, so you don't do that one next time and try another one. Yeah, and there's other ways to brand without, uh -huh. without with you know like a photo or maybe there's something on every kitchen that you have that's like a red hat or something you know like uh -huh. and everyone starts uh -huh. recognizing your listings if you uh -huh. have a lot of them. Okay. There's other ways to brand um, without using contact information. So you can brand. You could be like if every every single one of your listings you put something funny in front of it, like a gnome or something. You, you, I mean, Zillow can't figure that stuff out. They're they're hiring call centers in India to, to look for contact information and pictures. So, mm -hmm. um, so that's that's where we have. Let me go back to my other. Um, let me go back to my campus listing here. So experiment with pictures. I'd love to hear what you guys get to work um, because. <laughs> Um, we'll teach it that way, um, but I love Ken's idea uh, of taking a picture of your sign. Um, if you do open houses, a lot of the sites, there's, um, this tab syndicates to 300 plus sites. So if you, if you, if you do open houses, mm -hmm. put your open house in here. Do, not, not only do the Spokane open stuff because it's free, but do the open houses on here. Because there could be, out of those three or 400 websites, there could be a 50 or 60 of them that publish open houses. And so we don't know where a consumer is looking. They might be on homes.com, and at homes.com they're scrolling through and it says open house today, and you might have that person swing by your house. It'll take you 10 seconds to put an open house date in here. It's just, it's eight picker fields, start time, end time, add. So show date. Start time, end time, it would it literally would be a minute. 
and then every single site that is plugged in to publish open houses pulls that data. Virtual tours, this syndicates if you sync it, we have our virtual tour in here, but if maybe you want to do a branded branded virtual tour or something. Maybe you want something that's a little more snazzy than Tour Factory, just like you're saying. You put it in there because that will change the virtual tour link on those pages. <coughs> so maybe your virtual tour, have, maybe you have a special one you make, like if you get Animoto and you do a nice picture montage. Um, mm -hmm. Does everyone know what Animoto is? Animoto is about 30, 40 bucks a month. You put in a pile of pictures and it organizes them and transitions them and you just pick from a bunch of music and it makes a really stellar presentation. Um, and, and like my assistant can make an Animoto video of a listing in like 15 minutes of a, really, of a listing of 75 photos. That's your assistant. <laughs> so for, for normal assistants, maybe half an hour. Is, is, is that a program or is it a web? It's a website, oh, it's a web based, right? it's a web app, yeah. Virtual tour website? No, if you, you, can build, you can build anything with it. You can build anything with pictures. So we do marketing videos, like we take pictures of all of our sold signs, and then um, it says sold in five days, sold sign, sold in five days, sold sign, yeah. And so then when we, it, it's on, it's strategically in the bottom of all of our emails when we talk to our, talk to potential sellers. Cool. Yeah. And then that's uh, uh, 50 bucks a month or? 30, 39 maybe. Yeah, if you pay for the year, it gets to be like close to 29 yeah. And the SEO associated with that, or is it just all whatever you It's video, out? so you can embed it in the word with one click, so it's, it's nice. So, virtual tour, you can add multiple virtual tours here, and these these will not only show up in the link um, on that KW page I was showing you, um, you know, that where the KW generates page, it'll show up there, but any other page, any other type of site like Zillow, Trulia Homes, that publishes a, a virtual tour, it will syndicate that link too. And then we show up more than one then? Um, it depends on what we don't control those sites. If mm -hmm. they, they have access to the data mm -hmm. and they can use it however they want to use it, they can omit it or add it. So okay. um, KWLS is going to say, I've got five virtual tour links, but mm -hmm. uh, Zillow, Trulia, and all the, the group of the syndicates might say, We want the top one. We just want the first one. Okay. Some of them won't even take any, but okay. right. um, you know, they, they, it'll, it'll just depend. But I figure out there's got to be out of three or 400, there's got to be one that might take more. But for sure, the KW site is going to publish them all. So if you have any, um, which is for this next one, if you want really cool back, stellar backlinks, let's say like for this one, um, this one in uh, in on Campus Road here, um, let me pull it here. I just added these this morning. They haven't staked up. I had it on the other campus one, but we closed on it already, so it's no longer up, and I can't pull it up. But um, but what I do is add links in here. So you'll see this bottom one is uh, a neighborhood website I made for the neighborhood. So it's Pillar Rock Homes for Sale. And so these links get published on that KW landing page, which you can't think of any better higher end backlink for you than Keller Williams backlinking to your website from a page that is from that neighborhood and about a house and relevant to your website. I can't think of anything better to do. Um, and so I, I can guarantee you that most of the 300 syndicates are not going to syndicate your website link onto their page. They just won't do it. They want they want the data so they can sell it to you. Mm -hmm. But Keller Williams is all about your listings, your lead. They'll publish whatever information you put into the KWLS. So I put a couple links in there just for the purposes of generating more backlinks to my neighborhood pages. The reason the reason I do too, this back to the strategy portion of how you use this is. My, my listing, 8619 West Campus, the link directly to the listing in my, on my website has a shelf life. When I close on that, right. that listing goes away on my website, right? But the KW page has a little landing page that says this page, this home is no longer available, has like a sold on it. And so my thought is, is my neighborhood site could continue to keep backlinks. So every time I close a house with a neighborhood link, I'm, I'm building more. So this is something we just started doing, and I. But it would take you. It's but by the time you input it, go into the system and fill all these out, maybe a half an hour for the whole listing. Your first time, you're going to spend an hour because you're going to be clunky, but I promise you, it looks harder than it is. It's if you can use Gmail, you can you you can do this. And where where is your neighborhood site located? Is it like your 
Okay. It's on our it's on our WordPress blog. I'll, okay. If you guys have if you guys don't mind, I'll just I'll take this here real quick. Let me. So my Pillar Rock Homes for Sale landing page, which lists all of the homes for sale in Pillar Rock, which you would imagine it would, um, when one of which is ours, which obviously you can tell. But so when people land there, they land. These are the homes for sale in that neighborhood. And so, and then we have compulsory, just like the chips and the candy in the checkout aisle, we have compulsory quick searches. You know, for people to, to, to make them go deeper into the radical. So, any questions this far? It's pretty much fill in the blank. It's and it was. I thought it was going to be way harder than it was when I got into it, but they made it with simplicity in mind. The problem is, we did. How, did anyone else? I mean, I didn't know this existed. I've been at Keller Williams. It's going to be my fourth year. Um, uh, I, I barely knew this existed and what power it had. And I can guarantee you that there is a very small pie of people who are using this data effectively. I intend to be one of them, but it's still going to take a lot of work to switch over. So, docs. Um, I, didn't, uh, I didn't let the Java applet run, but you can upload because it would be slow. Um, you can upload documents in here, just like associated docs, plat maps, sewer summaries, those types of things. Some some of the pages, I can tell you that the big three, the Zillow, Trulia, the Homes.com, those guys, they're not going to uh, publish docs, but there's there's sites out there that will publish and link back to the docs. So, plus um, PDFs are indexable if you do them right. So, I mean, there's theories there. I just haven't tested all these. I have. I've, so, I've, what would you put for docs? Like, would you, are you talking about like a plat map or what do you think? You do a plat map, you might do a feature list. Like I have a, a high-end home in Culver, oh. I might do a feature list for okay. this. You know, it has double dual fuel oven, it has pantry, it has, right. you know, high-end you know, widgets. So, um, that type of stuff. Um, and you can get in, you can get it, you know, it, it'll, and it says that you take PowerPoint, you do all sorts of cool stuff on there. I, I, I looked around, I'm on the, marketing groups, I'm on all those things online. I don't see anyone doing anything at a high level, which could either mean two things, nobody knows much about it, or it's not valuable. So I guess that's for us to uh, for us to determine. So um, I, I do think there's value in these, in virtual tours, links, and images and details, those few things. If, you, if you're gonna do, if you're gonna, if you're gonna implement one thing in your business today, um, from this class, I would at least put your phone number in the top of every listing and gave it to us if you did nothing else after today. And uh, potentially add one or two more photos. Premium tools, this section changes a lot. Um, and this, this, this site was used a lot before we had Market Leader and the Edge marketing tools, but they have red property sites and you can like get a, you can build, like, you can pay, this is pay, pay per use section here, but um, they add mar marketing packages based on the listing. So if the listing fits certain criteria, you'll have other compulsory ads for your marketing here. Um, red property sites is like a single property landing site. It, I think it embellishes the one that they've got there, but I think what they have up there, plenty of fun. So I don't ever add on to any of these. Some of my listings, like if they're luxury qualifying, you can do all sorts of stuff. You can, and, and on there, but I, I don't use any of those. But I just wanted to go through all of them with you, um, with you on. Them. So does everybody have that? So what our workflow was, um, let's say Monday, uh, put in the listing on campus. Tuesday or Wednesday, it is synced up, and we we recognized it here under our accepted under our accepted um, listings, and it's active. So Tuesday or Wednesday, when it's accepted, I can click on the MLS number, and I can open that. And then I can go in there and I can make my modifications. The most important ones, if you were just to prioritize it, I would say you would update the details, update the remarks immediately uh, with a phone number and a web address. If you don't have a web address, don't let it be a stumbling block. Just put the web address you have for now in there. 
when you get time or the skills or whatever you whatever is your hold up for doing that, if you want to do it, then get a different one, but it's not necessary. Um, it, um, you know, play around with it too. I just, while I was sitting here talking through it with you, I thought maybe I should say call or text. Mm -hmm. You know, we do get texts mm -hmm. still. But while I was sitting here, I thought, well, why don't I say call or text? Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, things like that, play around with it, see what works. Um, because people are going to be on Zillow a lot and doing that. So the next part um, I would do is uh, make sure your virtual tour link is there. If you, we're, we're going to play around with stuff. To, one, my, my biggest pet peeve with Tour Factory is, is there's no lead capture. Someone could watch it a thousand times. And I have, I have 2.5 million views on my Tour Factories. Mm -hmm. and, I, and, and then it says number of leads you've gotten like 90. Like, that, that is really bad. And so, Tour, tour Factory is not a really good lead capture. So, um, one of my goals is to perhaps find a really good lead capturing virtual tour that I can put in here, but keep my safe one on the MLS. Mm -hmm. So, I'd be willing to pay more money for something that's going to go out to all the websites that says, halfway through the tour, it prompts them and says, would you like more information on this property or something? Mm -hmm. so at least, at least give it a good college try to get a lead. Uh, yes. So if you've got your virtual tour in Paragon, it automatically is populating to um, your KW yep. site. And then okay. you can you can add another one or replace it or whatever. Uh -huh. you want. And then the other one you add is where you can um, add the kind of things you're talking about. Correct. Yeah. So okay. and then and then. Be patient, it'll take a couple of days for these, just as it did, the same down, it will take a couple of days, probably two to three days, to see your changes. So, um, so a lot of your, you know, like, you know, be, be careful how you set expectations with your sellers if you're going to tell them you're going to do these things. I just tell them we have um, a lot of, a lot of tweaks we do to, to, to you know, basically make our um, syndicated websites more effective than others. I don't really go into detail because you get the guys that are high C's that will watch and they'll actually have, like I've seen it, they have check marks next to everything on my marketing presentation to make sure that I did it. Um, and so, you know, sometimes you just be a little vague because sometimes you do one thing differently than another. So, so then that's done. And then, then every time you modify a listing, like if you change the remarks or change the photos or change the tour or something like that, you have to go back in because we have told them not to synchronize back, back to synchronize. Does that make sense? Okay. So let's, are we, uh, is everyone thoroughly confused or are they, are everyone good? So let's talk about pre-listing. Okay. So I've got a listing and it's wonderful and I, I want to take full advantage to get more leads than anyone else. So, um, and that, cause it's my listing, my lead, um, and you know, the way that Zillow and Trulia are capturing data, when a new listing comes on the market, they're laughing all the way to the bank with all the leads they're selling to oh, Cambria agents. and you know, right. everyone on there. Mm -hmm. um, and so there, people are paying thousands and thousands. I know people are paying $5,000 a month for those leads. And, and mm -hmm. to me, I mean, I worked really hard calling, following up, and pricing, and all the things I did to get my listing. I'm going to get the lead. So, my strategy in a market when I can have a seller afford to wait maybe a couple days to get on the market is I have I do a listing presentation, and here's my script that I say to them. I say um, um, we're really uh, it's really important to us that we get the listing on the market in its most perfect fashion possible. We like to have flyers in the in the box. We like to have the lock box on. We like to have booties inside the door. We like to have everything ready to go. With that said, we don't want to rush into the market. So what I'd like to do is sign a listing agreement with you, have a waiver of services so we don't place you on the MLS for up to a week, to allow us to get all of the marketing perfect, have you review it, and get all these things in place before we start having a whole bunch of foot traffic through. Because if we show, if we have a poor showing on one of our first couple showings, it could mean a sale. And, and then I, then I tell them, Mark, is that something that you're okay with? I said, you're going to sign paperwork tonight. Today is Wednesday. I will, I will have you on the market no later than next Wednesday. Um, but my, my goal is to make sure that one, two things, two, two things. 
all the paperwork and everything is turned in correctly, all the pictures are perfectly documented, the virtual tour is all done, flyers are done, everything is ready. And if we can get you on any sooner, we will. But I, I would like to ask for that time to do it perfect. Almost everyone says, by all means, yes, we'd love to, we'd love that process. I said, because a lot of people will jump onto the market and they'll have virtual tour not done. How many times have you called, oh, I'm sorry, lockbox will fail until tomorrow. Or, you know, you, you go on the market, there's no flyers, or um, they're not quite ready to show yet, or, you know, associate, if you get an offer first day and you don't have seller disclosure and all that stuff up to, uploaded, you don't have exhibit A, you don't have all those things. I mean, it, it, first of all, if you, if you go on the market, you don't have all those things in there perfectly, and you get an offer, you know, you don't have the legal description. I mean, that's a big deal, all those things. So to do that properly is you have, there's a waiver of MLS services form, and the MLS actually sent out a note about it and told you exactly how to do it. You say that I'm waiving, and they have to initial like 500 times on that form. Like, I understand that this, I understand that, I understand this, I understand that. And so you just explain to them that you're, you're not losing out on any services for actually just taking a little bit of time to do it right. And for you, um, for me, I don't, I, I do that, I, I don't, and I do take time to get it right. All of my, in, in, that, in that scenario, my clients approve everything. I send them a proof of the MLS, I send them a proof of the photos, I send them everything, I get an email back, so they feel like they're really involved in this process. And then meanwhile, we're getting it, and I said, okay, we're, now that we have all this stuff approved, we're gonna syndicate it out to the websites, so that it will, they'll be the way we want them on the websites, and then we hit it live on the MLS. And then we did that with two of our listings, one of them sold the first day, one of them had a whole bunch of traffic, and you know we're still bouncing offers and stuff to get it, to get it sold. But, we're, we got a lot of traffic coming. So how do I do that, right? So um, you want a full listing agreement signed, it has to be effective, you have to have a waiver of MLS, you have to have everything lined up, perfect paperwork, even if you put it in, the, put it in paperless and everything. We used to have to notify the MLS every time we did something like this, but I think they got tired of that and that's why they made the form. So, um, so we're gonna go um, back to our dashboard and so I've got my listing, I'm perfectly legit. I'm gonna go, it's really tough here, you go create a listing. <laughs> um, and so it, it'll remind you, I have to uncheck this box here. And you only have this box or this list hub enabled, the one I talked to you about earlier, to, to stop syndication temporarily. So if you, if you only pre-market some of your listings like we do, the ones where I do the script and the people are on board, but you always will have that seller that says, I need you to come out and list my house. It's gonna be on the market before you get here, right? And, and, and so you're, there's, there's the fire drill listings. You're not gonna to get to take this time to do it. I'm just gonna let it sink and then do the back, the, you know, the, uh, during the market listing, marketing. So I'm gonna temporarily turn this off. If you're a forgetful person for something, um, you'll want to make yourself a note and put it on your sticky board because you're gonna realize that eventually that some of your listings aren't showing up on Zillow and Trulia and it might be really late by the time you figure that out. And, and it's two or three days until it gets back, everything's synced up. So we go list hub enabled off. This is a temporary turn off because we only do some of them. Okay, create listing. It's the, it's the exact setup of our, um, of our edit screen. With just a, with just an input field. Um, so we're going to do two, two, three Elm Street. One, two, three. Elm. One, two, three Elm Street. Two hundred ninety-nine thousand. <clears throat> Listing date, you set all this date, you can actually set, set its status in here, much like the MLS. Um, display the address online, you can have it not syndicated. So you can have it syndicate the address on the MLS, but you can have it turn it off you know, on those other sites. But to me, if I turn the address off on all those sites, I'm just going to drive more people to Cambria and all those people on that list. So if they have the address, I at least have the opportunity for them to search for it when they go to findhomes.mob or when they want to drive by it and call me, or something like that. Is that listing date the date is going on the MLS or the date you want to list it to your website? 
I have it listed. I, I put the, the way I found it is that listing date is the day that I'm putting it in. Because if it's, if it's before that date, it won't sync it. Because uh, list up says, give me all the data from this range, which is because it knows when it picked up data last. Does that make sense? So you leave the listing date for the day, the day you put it in. Okay. On or before. Okay. The, the day you the, put it in, put it in what? The free KWLS. Okay. Oh, the date you put it in. KWLS. Because if you put it, if, you, if you're going to put it for next week, it's not going to sync till next week. Because list hub says I want this date range, and then I take it. I don't because it it would be inefficient, and I'm only speculating, but I have experience in this realm. But I'm only speculating they wouldn't say give me all data again. They're going to say give me all new data, and they're going to say give me all updated data, and then that way they're not transferring the whole data file every time. So does this then populate to Paragon, or on the listing date you go in and do it again? You, yeah. So you're okay. going to partial save it in Paragon. And then that's how I do. So we part, we go Paragon partial save, send it to them to review. They reviewed the data, so I have the data reviewed. Everything's good. Re-input it here. Then we go live on Zillow. So I, and I keep it partial saved in Paragon. Does that make sense? Yep. So this is not full partial. Yep. It will not full partials. So would it? Would it, really nice. would it have yeah. a MLS number at this point, or does that not happen until we're the getting list? there? Yep. So we're getting there. Oh. Um, and so. Um, so you set everything out, single property type, square footage, beds, baths. Property description, and this is where you can put all that stuff in. Um, all this stuff, these are just text fields. There's no tricks here, but put it in the way you want it. Map URL is really nice because I just searched for the property on Google Maps and copied the URL and put it there. And now all the links update with my map. So uh, I had, I had, yeah. And I, I guess I have a, a theory on how I'll test it if it works. I'll let you know. When you say your map, so let me let me minimize this real quick. So let's go. Okay, so it's Scott here. This little gear down here, mm -hmm. does everyone see where my mouse is down at the bottom right? Mm -hmm. This little gear says search share or embed map. And you can, this is how I send directions to people all the time is it'll, you, you got a link here for that map. Does everyone got that? So you just put that map URL in there, and so that syndicates it out to all the sites right where you want it. Um, longitude and latitude, you get GPS coordinates. And so you, you basically set the marker where it's supposed to be, and then you and then you go done, and it fills in your latitude and longitude. Presto Zambi. So we're going to put in our school district. And you can say like, uh, you know, some this might be in Northwest Spokane, it might be in Perry District. I put in all sorts of buzzwords that people might Google or whatever, you know. Um, um, we'd make them accurate because that would be an ethical violation if it truly isn't. And then like if it's a subdivision. And then I like the cross street, so we're on Main Street and we'll go Johnson Street. Because some of the mapping softwares go Main and Johnson, you know, they'll they'll put it in there so people can help find it. The more information you put in, the better in my opinion. So I'm gonna go back, I'm gonna I'm gonna go and address that um, I'm gonna go and address that uh, issue with the uh, MLS number. I think I've got enough in here just to do a partial save. Price points right? Can you do a luxury home even though you're not? Mm -hmm. no. So here's where they get you. Here's where they say, okay, you put in your data. Now they're asking for an MLS number. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I make one up. Oh. Okay. 
So this is 123 Main Street. I put 123 Main Street slash SHG. Actually, I stopped doing the slash because I thought some of the sites might not like that special character. Um, and I stopped doing SHG, so I go 123, and, I'll, and then I'll put like our phone number. Or, you know, so I'll put the first four digits of the address and then our phone number. And then that way, when we're looking for it, we can find it. Because I thought that perhaps they may not like alphanumeric. Because I've never seen an alphanumeric MLS number. So I put this in here, and I save it. And, I'm, and you check Spokane Association of Realtors. And this is what they said when I went to, I, well, there was one video I found on inputting this, and this is what they said to do this, put it in, make one up. You can go put it, when you when you upload it then, you can sync them. To, you can go put your MLS number in there when you finally bring when it up. And I can add my photos, so you can browse your photos and see if there's any photos on here we can upload. I didn't start the job app, but I'm sorry, so we're, we won't be able to do that. But, uh, let's see. Well, I canceled that. So. Um, so you have browse photos, you add your photos to it, just like we were saying, you can throw those in there. If you want to try the branded, it'll last for like a day, but it's not worth your time, in my opinion, until it works. Mm -hmm. And then you can add all of your data here again, open houses, virtual tours, docs, and tools. So I've saved this, and I've initiated this. You can see that I've initiated it. It's not accepted. If I were to go through the full process and save it, did I lose somebody, did I lose you, Ken? No, no, no. Oh. Um, I'm not going to save this because I don't want to put a fake listing on the market. On call. It would literally go to Zillow and Truly and all that stuff. Um, but I can go in there and at the very bottom I can say active listing, go, and it says your listing's now live on the KWLS, congratulations. And within two days that listing starts showing up in Zillow, Truly and all those pages. And you do not have it on the MLS yet. Brandon, quick yeah. question. In your description, are you putting information or something to indicate yeah. it's Yeah. Right? Call us now, coming soon. So this from this page, this will activate it? Not yet. So if you go here, and you, you're in your listing. I hope that's not going to slow Submit for review. Oh, okay. Click that. Um, there is no review. It's like instantaneously accepted. I think they have a. I think they have a review queue they can turn on if they start having a problem with you, maybe. Or maybe there's a market center level review. Okay, and in the beginning of this, you unclicked list hub enabled. Yeah. Why? Because I need to stop that process to put one in, and then I got to turn it back on. So once you're done with your pre-marketing input, and this is ready, you'll go back and, and turn it on. Okay. And then you, you need to make sure when you make the listing live, you go put the MLS number in here. Right. Otherwise, you're going to have duplicate listings. You're going to have one that has all your fancy marketing and one that doesn't, and that might be okay. You can delete the one that with your pre-marketing and let the other one go and update that. Whatever you want to do. So you're just done checking in that list hub enabled box to input all this and set it up temporarily. Then you go back, you check it, and it's not going to back feed into Paragon one way. With the menu, you check that box immediately after. Yeah, when I'm done here. Oh, look, and so I'm going to say, uh, I, let's just pretend I said submit for review because I don't want to. I don't want to have to deal with having to take it out of the system, which you can, but I, I just don't. I wouldn't want anything to sink that uh, on accident. So, say you submitted for review, it's going to show up under accepted, and if, if there was a review queue, which they might start doing that, I think people are starting to do KWS. It would say submitted, and it would give you a little status update. But it goes straight, straight for me. It always goes straight initiated to accepted. And then within two days, it shows up. It's not on the MLS. All my data is in there. People are finding it. It's, and and you be in your remarks. There's as long as you follow the ethical guide of your realtor code of ethics is what you say. But you say this listing is coming soon. Please contact us directly nine nine zero seven six five three. And it's the first thing in there. So uh, and then people are going to say they're going to find it soon. And then they're going to go on to johnlscott.com. Be like, I can't find it. I can't find it. I'm going to better call this guy because it's my house. Mm -hmm. As long as you, yeah, so. It's awesome. So, and it's, so, it, and so, you know, <laughs> so uh, because Terry's customers uh, tend to find things on Zillow and there was no address disclosed, so then the realtor calls him and says, where is this? 
So would you find yourself, is that a problem being in those kind of situations? You just tell the realtor it's coming soon, a couple days? We didn't double side the one on 10th. We have, you have it listed and there is a co-op commission. You're just withholding the thing. I said, go ahead and show it. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's okay. the one on 10th. It was another agent. He says, my client found this on Zillow. It looks like you're pre-marketing it. Right. He, he, he was savvy, he, he, you know, he didn't. Okay. I, I was surprised, but <laughs> it looks like you're pre-marketing it. He's like, may I show it or do I need to wait? He goes, and then he, and he was actually pretty smart. He goes, is there a co-op yet? And I said, yeah, there's a co-op. I mean, I'm not trying to, well, out, I'm not, I'm not going to keep the house from selling. Right. I'm right. just going to try and get a few good leads before it goes on the MLS. Okay. Okay. Good. Um, Thank in you. In our description, the very first thing is coming to cooperating brokers welcome. At yeah. That point, it's clear we're not trying to double charge. Yeah. 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 So it sounds like you guys are good. Do you have anything that I haven't covered that you might add? Or? I was wondering about post lists and the, what do you think about that versus the Is that touching anything other outside the state of the US? It might be, but what I worry about with postlets is because they overlap on some of the list type stuff. Yeah. I don't, I, 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 I wouldn't want, because the second you input a, a system in the hierarchy, so KW is pretty high up there. It overrides a lot of stuff, but if there's some other service that might override that, you're going to have two separate kinds of data. And I, I, prefer, I, I prefer to keep the data solid and updated from this portal. I don't want to have more than, I've already got to do it here and the MLS, and that's two places, and that's one too many in my opinion, but. Um, but yeah, so I would do that. So you do the coming soon portion of it. You can generate some leads, hopefully pretty early. Make sure that you or your agents are answering the phone and taking advantage of that um, or manning the text and doing all that stuff on there. So um, there's, there's tons of leads to be had because especially in a market right now where people, I don't know if you saw, anyone saw John Thomas's post with all the zombies being like going after the new because that's like how it is right now is like I, I, I watch the new inventory like five times a day I track all the changes from like you know nine to noon and noon to three and, and because we're, we're chasing houses that came on the market an hour ago mm -hmm. for some of our buyers so um, if you can uh, just kind of like quietly walk around that group of people in that chaotic environment and just kind of post something on the market and then grab a whole bunch of buyers why not during the pre-listing portion, are you throwing a coming soon rider on your sign? Uh, we haven't been. Um, we like we started getting on some of our pre-marketing lately because the market's been so hot. We have started getting phone calls, like literally as the sign guy's putting the sign up, like he's zip tying it on, and people are like getting out of getting in his way to get the phone number. <laughs> and so um, I told him he could. I was going to give him a magnet for the back of his truck, and just so he could have that there. But. Um, um, we, we put up our, we do professional photography, so we have the sign put up at photography, which, and then the photography photos, for the ones we don't pre-market, the photos hit the next day, so we get the listing on the following day, and then the ones we pre-market, we, um, we have obviously the agreement that we get flyers out usually the next day. And so when, when you pre-market, do the full marketing, just keep it off the MLS, get your flyers out there, because if, if people can't find it on John L. Scott and any other website, even kw. Well, they find it on kw.com because kw lets use it. But if they can't find it anywhere, uh, they're going to drive by. They're going to grab a flyer. So, have you had people call you guys from the flyers we do? Oh yeah. Okay, because we have kind of put through flyers because we haven't had any calls. You know, but this isn't for pre listings. So you at least have flyers out there for pre listings. I have private flyers to hold. We get about two thousand leads a year off our flyers. Two thousand wow. inbound high year calls. I'd be happy to do plus on that sometimes too, but we get a lot. We get a lot of sales from it. And I, it's enough for me to, I spend about $3,000 a year on flyers. Oh, and I usually, have, I probably made that back already this year. So, oh. so um, this is really good. I have, we have some time. Um, if, I have Q, I'll, I'll take five, 10 minutes for Q of A, Q and A. It doesn't have to be necessarily related to KWLS. And then I have a few, cool tools for people who don't want to spend a monthly fee on generating leads and, and forms and stuff like that. And I don't know if that's of interest to anyone, but I have a couple cool ideas that I would like to share. So. Uh, outside of KWLS, if you'd love to find out more about your EIG and for even the pro version, you would be able to give you one extra page. I would love to know about WordPress and I know that's a 
big discussion, but we might be a little bit short now. Yep. Um, you know, there's he's talking he's asking about realtor websites. So um, and there's there's been somewhat I don't know if I call it an exodus yet, but there's been a large um, off pushing of some of the market leader products, um, just because I think um, savvy and tech savvy realtors are becoming more and more. Uh, they crave they're craving customizations. They want to they want to stand out in their marketplace. Uh, they want to brand. And when you win, let's say all the major brands, you know the Realogy brand, Keller Williams, we all have the same platform. So when someone's visiting a site, it doesn't matter. It's, I can't tell. You should visit my EH site, my market leader site, because it's better than his. Like, why? I mean, you get one extra page, and that better have some really great content for me to make stickiness there. I mean, so you, if you, there's no reason, and that's why people are being drawn to Zillow, because all real estate sites are the same. They might as well go to this one not neutral site. And so, I we we've used WordPress and IDX Broker. I know, and that's like the big. Thing that everyone's doing. I've been doing it for seven years. I, I never, I, and I did have a market leader site, but I would, I would get a WordPress if you, if you're going to do it. And it's, it's a whole other, it's a whole other project. It's a whole other class. But if you don't have the skills to do it, it's way more worth your time to pick up the phone and prospect or go knock on doors and do all that stuff than to try and learn how to build a website. So if you don't know how to do it, or your team doesn't know how to do it. I would, I would, I would go and generate the revenue to pay someone to do it, because your time's going to be better spent doing that. You're going to, you're going to make a lot of money having a nice website. Uh, we, we, we can generate over 100 web leads a month off of ours, um, just that one. And the, but the thing is, is you, if, if it's not your core competency, don't do it. But I would say if you were to tell someone what you want, and I would, I would do WordPress and IDX broker, or DS Express, the WordPress plugin, IDX, and I could go. I could do a really high-level overview class. We could set it up with Chase of uh, all the different options out there. But uh, you know, I happen to have a background in technology and software, so I I do my own. But I would I, I would say if you didn't know it, you would spend weeks and months doing it. Mm -hmm. So do what you do best. Make money to pay people that make money doing what they do best. So it's both that the same. Yeah. So if you, and that's a good question. If you're on a budget, we all still have WolfNet. Everyone has WolfNet IDX in KW. Does, does everyone know what that is? Yeah. So I can show you that real quick. Cause that'll take, and that's in KW right now. Everyone, every KW person has. Um, let's see if I'm still up yet. Brandon, all the steps you've covered so far for KWLS, you said you had kind of typed out in a PDF document. Yeah. I do. Yeah, I have it all really allowed. I, I, I took screenshots every every step. Can we order that through brandonmarketing.com or something? Um, I can. I, I think I send that to Chase. And okay. Chase, every, Chase has it sitting here. Everyone has it. Okay. Have, yeah, all of them. Have, I, I'll give it to anyone. So. Mm -hmm. Change it up. If I can remember my password, let me. Yeah. Hey, look it up. 
Oh, sorry. Um, so I monitor it. I change it throughout the year, depending on like how the market. I don't know whatever factors influence it, but when I start seeing um, real, like screw you at gmail.com and stuff like that, I um, up it in the lead. I yeah, but then you, you I'm up it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Up the number. And when you follow your you follow Google on your on Google on our website, don't you? Yes, I do. Yeah. So, um, oh. it actually has the words "don't forget" in it, but <laughs> special someone in my office kept forgetting it. So. <laughs> even, even So um, yeah, so we do two. So right now we've got rep two, and then um, when we stop seeing good, like about every three, every two or three has a phone number. And so if, if I start seeing no with phone numbers, and I start seeing, you know, inappropriate things, and I start seeing that whatever, I, I listen and I bump it up a couple, and it usually tapers back. So, um, but if I'm not getting, if I'm not getting the leads I want. Um, do you require um, an email in the phone number optional, or do you require both? Phone number is optional. Email, email address. Do you require an email? You, that you have to have an email address to log into our IDX. Sorry. So and yeah, so we do too. I don't know, um, like you can't manipulate anymore on Market Leader on how many they just pick. They you know, they pick it for you. They pick for you. Wolf Knight, you can't. Yeah. On on Market on the E Edge site, you can't pick how many people, site how many people can look at. And, uh, oh, okay. But if somebody registers on on the Wolf Knight site. Um, it automatically gets entered into the market leader site, into the edge. It does, yeah. And you can have it drop in the top producer or anything. Right. Yeah. Do you still use top producer? I do. I use top. I got rid of market leader completely. Yeah. So you don't use market leader at all? Mm -hmm. If we get a lead in our market leader pro account, we just move it into top producer. Mm -hmm. So um, maybe I can get into Gmail while this is trying to load. Yeah, so it's supposed to be KW then. I'm going to try and log into 
think we're going to get this through. So, um, if you go into the technology section of KW, um, you can go to your eEdge, manage eEdge site. So it's technology manage eEdge site. You, you have a WolfNet backend, and there's actually you have a free IDX site. So it has all they can, your clients can search listings. They can do everything they want in that system, and it, it does it has a mobile optimization. It is all dialed in. Um, I could teach a class on that. We use. I mean, it's, it's you, you're paying for it in your dues already, mm -hmm. um, and you actually get a little landing page too. And it, it, there's, it's 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 really point and click easy. And I could do a class on it when, someday when it will load. <laughs> um, and uh, it's uh, you can you can you can set up your own domain. So you you brandonmarchand.com. You can give people that domain, and it'll land up on the site. You can Pick a template from about five templates. You can add a bio. You can add pages on it. You can add forms. You can add all sorts of stuff on it. So if you want a web page on a budget, there we go. That's your agency. So the e agency. Yeah. Let's let's just hope this works now. So you can point and click. And then uh, give consumers that. If you're already paying, I, I, it's right. I don't know what's going on. Go. Um, so when the uh, you've got a free website that's there, so anyone who's new or doesn't want to spend a lot of money or um, wants to, wants to you know manage basically lead from revenue, um, so you're going to make as much money as you can before you move over. So e agency websites right here um, under technology, you've got a really great resource there. And it's 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 kind of point and click. You've got a, you've got a whole bunch of reading you can do to learn about uh, to learn about. There's a manual, it, it, and it says step one, do this. Step two, do that. Step three, do that. And in, in, by the time you're done, it's like 50 pages. You have a website, and it's done. So I've done it before. So I'm just gonna. And they've got instructional videos. They have online classes. Um, KW Big <laughs> Mountain has people interview on like the strategies they do. Watch that. KW what? Agent Mountain. Log into your KW.com and search Agent Mountain. Um, so Gary Keller, um, have you heard of him? He, uh, he, he does phone, online phone calls with people and they record it and they put it up online. And so if there's, some, if there's something you want to know, it's, it's crazy if you say, I want to know how to send out mailers. He'll have, he'll, there's probably, over the last 10 years, he's probably talked to 10 people that do mailers. Or if you want to learn how to do um, something with your e-agency site, there's people that do that, and he interviews them, and you just listen to it. I listen to them all the time. I, I don't. I, it, it's one of the best tools we have here is to listen to that stuff. Um, but they have an SEO checklist, so when you get there, all this is at your fingertips. So I'm going to go to this e-agency button here to start my e-agency site. This again is the free one that's separate from the market leader. It's not yet, Jeff. Okay. You said you prefer one over the other. Um, well, the eEdge has a backend and follow-up tools and all that stuff. Um, this allows more customizations. So, if you want to have your photo and talk about your, you know, if 
if you're if you're interested in building your you know building tribes and building people that like the same things you like and stuff like that, you don't want to have a cookie cutter site. I mean, this is cookie cutter, but you can at least uh, personalize it. So this is the one that the vendor at every KW event is at, charging like nine hundred bucks or a thousand bucks to totally rewrap it. Yeah, that's another thing. Yeah. All right. So but they they they're they're already making lots of money off of us. This this. This was like the technology key ten years ago. This was the E Edge key ten years ago. There's there's still a bed with Keller Williams on it. So, um, so I'm going to edit my Brandon Marchand at mykwagent.com. I'm going to quickly show you what that looks like. Um, I'm licensed in Washington and Idaho. So I'm in the luxury homes group. So um, mine's got the luxury template. Um, and then I think my Idaho one. So I'm licensed in two market centers. I'm actually three market centers now because I'm in um, Sandpoint. So, mm -hmm. so I'll have a third one on there pretty soon. But so this this is one of the templates. Like the luxury one looks the best, um, but this one is also one too. Looks really nice. Um, has a free property search, uh, featured properties, Keller Williams property, search for property in your area. And and this website is through what? KW. This is the KW website that we can go in and set up. Okay, thank you. <laughs> yep, you go basically what you need to do is go to technology uh -huh. right. and click on the agency website. Mm -hmm. I would start over here. And, and start reading the instructional videos and go through that, educate yourself, because this is designed for you to do it at all. It, it's, mm -hmm. And there are people out there in the KW system that will probably like, would charge you if you wanted to do it, but this is set up easy button. Mm -hmm. And so I'm gonna show you, so I'm gonna edit this one here. Uh, let, let me just edit this, this one that's not the luxury one. This is the search right here, um, and I have this set up for. I have an Idaho one set up for Idaho right now because I don't. I didn't want to. I don't. There's not a lot of IDX providers in Idaho. This isn't my Idaho one, but I do have. I do have one set up for that. Um, so, right here, down down the left hand side, edit agent team info, um, and this is good. this is a really abbreviated one. If you guys want a class, I'll do one. I, I don't mind at all. Sure. Um, you can you can purchase a domain and it will set it all up for you. So brandonmarchand.com, buy it, sets it up. Next button, next easy button. Just keep moving down the list. How to configure it all? There's everything has everything has a how to. Um, contact info is kind of important on an a real estate agent website. Um, I pull up from the web, web pages. Of the KW, I don't know if, if you haven't updated. The, this is a tangent, but if you haven't updated that, please do because you get a lot of referrals. You always got to add glamour shots of yourself. You got to add photos. Um, so here's where you can choose your template. They have a whole bunch of they have well, a whole bunch too. They have some landscape, some homes, some modern, different different styles. They even have Canadian mm -hmm. Canadian layouts. I don't know, it, it's written in Canadian. <laughs> it says sorry. <laughs> so um, yeah, they have a whole bunch of different different layouts you can pick. Pretty customized at homes, modern layout, um, different color schemes, top navigation, commercial, Canadian custom. So um, and the custom one, you can actually like update the header image. I don't know if you've seen a person's site where they've got them like looking all great. You can update your custom editor image. But this is really pretty simple to go through. Add your content, customize your navigation, add links. You can do everything you need to do. It's And you notice the 3.1, the 3.2, that corresponds with that tutorial. So you're like, oh, I'm on 3.2. You go to the tutorial, oh, 3.2. Read it, and it helps you. Um, your IDX search. Um, 
then just a little bit left. This one doesn't have the IDX on it. In here, you can all, this is where you'll set your two, how many listings you want to look at before they uh, pull up. You have one, two, three, five. I like two, and then if you start getting cruddy leads, then do five. Can we do IDX broker instead of the full panel? Yeah, it's an integrated system. So, and then, um, so basic, basically it's all it's all point click. So um, if, if you if you're not not loving doing the market leader thing or you want that, you've got this is also a free tool. Your leads will go into your e edge automatically. So in my opinion, I had two different ones. I would use one in one ad and test it. Like I would have brandmarchandhomes.com and brandmarchand.com here, and I would be able to tell which ones were working. When we did Craigslist, and Craigslist was trying to tell you apart, I was using all three of my IDXs, IDX Broker, eEdge, and this, because um, you have it, you can use it for lead gen. So I, I have some buyers who I get through this still. I mean, in any, any type of lead and search that people do on kw.com from those kw microsites that I showed you in the beginning will come through here. So, but this is, this is really easy. Um, if you even if you wanted, I could probably walk a group of people through it in a two-hour session. So, so, if you wanted to send that. But uh, I'm gonna open up for questions. Uh, uh, my, my office is right across from the men's bathroom. You can't miss it. If you ever have any questions, I'd be happy to um, be happy to help in any way. Um, I may not be able to help you that exact second, but I would always set an appointment to help you. So, if I can't do it right now. So, and never for marketing. <laughs> that uh, that link to purchase a domain name is, is that one fine or like with me I have all mine through GoDaddy would I just go to GoDaddy and get one or just go there correct I would go through GoDaddy okay. if you don't if you don't know what, we, what we're talking about then click that link okay. because, but if, if you have your own set of domains like we do all ours through GoDaddy um, oh. I would prefer to have them under one area um, there is a process for that. I think there was a link to send it. There was actually was okay. a Okay, and then you can mask it and hide the one they probably generate for you. The site, the app. Yeah, that's it, you, you, you would see it, yeah. Okay. Um, well, for someone who doesn't know how to do it, they should just click buy it through there. It costs them a couple extra bucks, right? Yeah, kw, kwdomainstore.com, they're making a couple bucks on the domain purchase. Yeah. So it's 14 instead of 12 bucks. Yeah, it's a couple bucks, yeah. And so it says already own a domain name. Please refer to your register of instructions and setting up the domain name. And then, um, and then if you do, if you just purchased the domain name, it shows you how to configure it. And it's uh, this part can be tricky, but it's um, and if, if it were to load, it would show you what you need to do. But um, they follow the instructions. Just go slow. Don't be in a hurry. Don't do it sometime when you have to be somewhere in an hour. Just be like, hey, I have the afternoon. I'm going to work on this and get as far as you can get that day and then move on. Don't get stressed out because it's when people get in a hurry with this kind of stuff and they don't read. <laughs> because um, we have so much information at our fingertips, we take it for granted, we don't read it all anymore. So you look at it and be like, oh, I think I know what to do. And then by the time you three steps in, you should have put something here and now you got to start over. So just go slow, read everything, follow up. And if there's ever an instruction, even if you think you know it, it's probably a trick. There's a reason they put the instructions there. Just read it and and, and then do it. So. Buyer versus seller website, do you have a preference? I mean, would you say this is a better seller website or uh, an open steel fitting on a drive your sellers to the site that's for sellers and buyers for the site? Can you tell that? We get, we get a lot of our sellers um, through our main spoken on their website. Um, and through our seller marketing. I mean, our expired marketing goes to a specific seller website, but um, that no one else does, no one else goes to that. We just want to track results. Yeah. And then if you, if, you, if you want to get some kind of placement SEO-wise, this agency is probably the way to do it versus trying to plug it money and open up that. Yeah, you say. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I would, I'm not, I'm not a, he, what he's asking is, should you spend time developing your EH site or should you spend time developing this? Ideally, in, 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 in a perfect world, if, if you had an uh, unlimited source of funds, you would develop your own own system that um, is there. Because for whatever reason, EH, we could part ways, 
or whatever, and then here's, you've got to pay that, you've got to redevelop that stuff. But if you have a WordPress site that you've hosted and you've got it all set up, worst case scenario, your your, mark, your IDX system goes out of business or something, you just got to plug in a new IDX system, but all your content is there. You just got to re-plug it in. I believe if I'm building a business worth owning, I'm going to own, I'm going to own my products and my strategic part, parts of my business. I'm going to own them. And then your, uh, your WordPress site, does that jump right into your, uh, what is that jump there? Your Top top is that, that, one? that WordPress, is that, is that the blog? Yeah, so I'll show you. We well, have 15, Let me ask you, because when I was in uh, Florida here at Family Reunion, there was a, a class there. They have a WordPress blog and some kind of plug-in that only seem to work with the e-agency sites. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, the the e-agencies have a WordPress plugin now, and a lot of them do. Okay, I thought it was really cool, but it I'm is. easily impressed. <laughs> it is cool, because before these plugins existed, I, I mean, I had to develop all, I had to code all these things to do these drop-downs and, and for neighborhoods and all that stuff, but it's now that they have plugins coming out now, I mean, they're, they're basically taking the hours of work I did to code it to fix it. So, so this is you, this is your Sorry. WordPress site. My, my WordPress site. Yeah. Um, and did you say there's some what was it? Some IDX something or? So we use IDX broker. You can't. Tell, the only like so I'm going to search right now, and I'm going to go to now. We're transitioning to my IDX broker. So you'll notice up here, my IDX broker is masked in a subdomain, so it doesn't it doesn't look like you're changing sites. In fact, the template stays the same. And so, so do you get this through the IDX broker? Is that something you can you buy. go in and buy? Yeah, we pay a hundred dollars a month for that service. Okay. And they have people that will set it up for you and WordPress and everything, but you're getting into the thousands of dollar range. So, we mm -hmm. we've just set up a system that's in the front the resolution on this projectors lower than anyone we would ever see. We track all the resolutions on our tracking is optimized for our kind of middle of the road resolutions. But you can see we have a few things like the map is a little bit generous um, there. But we uh, we're gener we're generating like in the first three days of March we had like thirty some leads coming in from our site. And so you'll notice if you look because um, what we're finding are people are are coming to the site looking at a house and they're like, oh, I'm looking in the 150 to 250 range. This house is $300,000 because we never put the price on anything. And they're like, I love that house. I'd pay $150,000 for that house. And, you know, whatever, not this one maybe, but um, so then, then they click on properties for $150,000 and we've got all the properties for $150 to $199 and they can start sorting. And then as they start looking through them, um, we're going to capture them. Site. You like IDX broker just because it looks better, right? I think it has. I think the SEO is a lot better on it. Yeah. I don't remember if we're on two or five right now. And of course, one well, demoing it won't work. Mm -hmm. There we go. Mm -hmm. yeah, it was five. Um, so we're at five right now. So we, I change it depending on where our leads are. We're getting really good leads right now. You must register to view this page in order to continue. We ask you to register your name, valid email address, and, and so we go first name, last name, email. Phone is optional, but we get a lot of phone numbers. A lot of people have form fillers, like it, like you know, Chrome and mm -hmm. Firefox is like, it's like, oh, we know these fields, yellow, and they're like, click enter and it just sends it, and so they may arbitrarily send it. Um, we're we're hoping that IDX Broker comes out with a Facebook login because they're logged into Facebook and all the information they store on Facebook can automatically just be sent as a lead, mm. um, which is pretty cool. What's IDX Broker? They're not just an IDX provider. Oh. Yeah. They're one. So there's there's third party companies that can can supply this data for you. I've always just used the third party. This is what I've had since my pre KW days. I just never let it go. So. Yeah, you sign up, and if you don't sign up, it just takes you back to the search, and you got to start over. So you, you learn your first time, I guess. But that's just what we do um, on that. So um, I have 10 minutes. I'm going to see if I can sh if, if it will let me show you guys the really cool form way that we can do. If you guys, 
um, when I do anything on Facebook. Um, sure. <laughs> yeah, you can put the links in there, but it's already embedded with um, it's already embedded with the other one. Do you do any appropriate to the Bible and Greek site? Or if you have multiple sites, or do you just pick from one feed? And you, can you can only have one subdomain wrapper. So if you have like marcoshomes.com and bobshomes.com, you can only have idx.marcoshomes.com. But I, I still do it. I you know, just make your subdomain generic between the three. Um, so So um, you saw where I went. Everyone has. Everyone should have Gmail now through Keller Williams, right? Mm -hmm. And um, you've got under under your apps here. You've got Sheets. Um, Google has Sheets. It's really cool. I, I use these for when I'm taking notes on the phone. I even Docs and Sheets because I don't I don't have to scan it. I don't have to worry about the thing here. So I have my computer up. I'm on the phone, and I I go to I just I just simply go here, and then Docs. And I've got a blank sheet here, and I just start typing. And then when I save it, um, you'll see that I have like untitled document or three eight two fifteen to do. It's automatically, it's automatically um, uh, saved in the cloud. I don't have to scan it because I'm horrible. I'll take notes on the phone, and then I have a pile of notes next to me, and then it's gone. And then then I'm like, then I look like a goof because I uh, wrote down five things I need to do for a seller. And I lost the sheet, and then I have to call and be like, "What do you want me to do again?" And now I just open, I just, I get here and I go, button. Sorry, I can't see it. So, um, you do that instead of operation. Why? Just because I. Um, not always in the top producer. If I'm like, a, like I turn a lot of calls at Starbucks on the internet there, I'm driving right around, and I put them in here. And then, because a lot of times I'm copy pasting tasks to like an email, so I, I type them here and I've got them saved. And then when I get somewhere, I'll pull all my tasks out and I'll send them up to an A and all that stuff. So um, I'm going to go back to my sheets here. Google Sheets. You go to Tools, and I want to create a form. The new form was created, add questions here. And so I have a bunch of form set sessions. You know, everyone sees those woo-foo forms, they're like 10 bucks a month, and you get lead pages, which I think if anyone follows Lori Ballin, you have, uh, you see that she has the $50 a month lead pages system. You can build a form here, and you can send the link, put the link on Facebook, and when people respond to it, it automatically puts them in a spreadsheet for you in Google. So we've done a response, uh, spreadsheet to our sellers, or we've done um, we've done lots of stuff. You can even build a feed bag for a listing on here. So I can say, because then it would be free. You can go one, two, three. I think I'm too far away from the keyboard now. Some tech class. One, two, three, Main Street, and then. We're going to edit this question and say, we'll add one question. You can keep adding as many questions as you want. Require question. And We're not going to require a login, so anyone with the link can fill it out. And so I'm going to show a link to do the other response. Basically, fill this out. So now I've got a form here, so a short URL that you can actually send to people to do list to do listing feedback. 
you don't have to pay for it. And then when they submit it, it saves it in a spreadsheet that you can share with your sellers. I don't know where, I don't know if I saved it yet, but we'll figure it out. There you go. So you could actually do a share with your clients. So they would get they would get access to this. They could not, not, they couldn't edit it, they couldn't do anything. So think of all the possibilities. You could make a lead capture form, put it on Facebook, you can make a lead capture form, put it on a link on your website to have people fill out their fill out information for free home consultation. Then everything's put into a spreadsheet. So if you have first name, last name, email address, phone number, you dump that right into top producer or market leader, import it. So you have you have a whole bunch of really free tools at your fingertips right here. Um, uh, this this is just one of them. If your assistant made this form and you, and you had the questions pre-made, you wouldn't have to pay twenty or thirty bucks a month for showing suite. And then your sellers would be pretty pretty cool because you might even you in, in, if you were savvy enough in this spread, spreadsheet, you could lock one half of it and you could let your sellers respond on the other half. And then you just log in there and you could see, oh, we ended up fixing the chip's paint. And then you're like, oh great, because every time someone changes it, an email goes back and forth. And then now you have an interactive relationship in there. I mean, um, you, you can you can do a survey, you can do all sorts of stuff. We're we're planning on putting a, one together for our past clients just to find out what, what their needs are, if they're planning on staying in their home a certain amount of time, all sorts of stuff, questions, and it's just gonna accumulate it into a spreadsheet for us, we can tabulate it. So, but anyways, that was just one of the quick things I wanted to get to, I was hoping to get to it about 20 minutes ago, but it wasn't loading, so um, I'd love to hear from you guys if you have any questions or anything. So, that's all I have for now. This was awesome. This was so awesome.